Hey everybody, today I wanted to talk about a case study uh, at a manufacturing facility. Uh, and if you're experiencing problems with inflation or the uh, supply chain issues, uh, this may be something that, that may be of interest to you. So this particular uh, client uh, had everything going well. Um, they didn't think anything was wrong. Uh, took a look at their wastewater system and found out that they were uh, having one of their operators from the production side of things spending at least half their time around the clock, uh, all the time that this facility was open, babysitting their wastewater treatment plant. So the guys had gotten basically a decent handle on how to get things in control when they would um, get too high or too low uh, outside of their permit levels. And they're basically manually uh, adjusting pH in this system, which is uh, tremendously inefficient. And it was taking away from time that the operators could be spending on the actual operation of production, which would be generating revenue. So uh, what we did is we got back uh, half that person's time uh, on every shift of the operation. So we got back a quarter of an FTE. Um, we got to eliminate their shutdowns uh, every once in a while, once or twice a month, they were actually shutting down production because they would get too far outside of their uh, pH limits, uh, outside of their permit and have to shut the plant down to be able to get that pH back into range uh, so that they could start uh, discharging to the city again. So that was, a, that was a big problem. That got them back about 1% of their production a year. And then by actually doing that, uh, we were able to re reduce their chemical consumption by 30%. And they actually also had a, a, a huge corrosion problem because of the way that they were applying uh, their, their acid. Uh, it was corroding everything, all the metal around. Uh, there was a parking lot right next to it. So people were concerned about their cars being corroded as well, but all the infrastructure uh, around that wastewater facility was, was falling apart uh, from corrosion from the acid fumes. So a couple of things we did to, to uh, make those improvements um, is we educated the guys on pH. Um, just started asking them one day, like, tell me about pH. And they just said, you know, well, acid is low pH, basic is high. Okay. What else can you tell me about pH? <laughs> That's about it. That's all we know. So I saw immediately that that was a, just a big knowledge gap. So I took some time to educate the guys on uh, how pH works, that it's not linear. It's, it's actually logarithmic. And, and that explained why they were commenting to me before it hadn't really made sense. They were making comments like, you know, sometimes we add acid or caustic and it moves a little bit. Sometimes we add a little bit and it moves a lot, vice versa. So it seems like completely unpredictable. Um, and, it, and it took me a while to kind of figure out um, why they were saying those things. It didn't really make sense to me. Um, but once I asked them to explain pH to me and found out that they didn't understand it, then that helped me put all those pieces together. Um, they, they had a very crude um, automation setup that was wholly inadequate, uh, not enough pumps, not enough injection points, the wrong places. Um, so we adjusted the control settings on what they did have. Um, they were just manually adding chemicals. So we switched that over to pumps uh, on automation tied to the pH on a control and uh, adjusted the, the places that they were adding the, the chemistry and it was short circuiting and um, the, the chemistry just wasn't being effective. Uh, plus the way that they're applying it was causing all the corrosion issues. Um, and then sometimes they're adding things by, by hand, by, by bucket of acid and caustic, which is a, a huge uh, safety concern. So we completely eliminated that as well. So we got uh, improvements in uh, safety, uh, production and cost. Uh, we only spent a couple thousand bucks on a few small chemical dosing pumps. Um, it was all plastic piping. So that was super cheap, uh, a couple hundred bucks there. And then, um, you know, just a little bit of time and labor to 
uh, install these new things, uh, ROI for that project was a week. And it got them back again, like up for 1% on their production increase, 30% uh, reduction on their chemical cost. And they got back one of their operators uh, half the time. So, uh, and we eliminated the corrosion problem. So with that uh, time, um, FTE and uh, labor, we were able to get that freed up to work on more projects. So um, if your costs are going up, uh, that's a project like that that's kind of hidden in plain sight is something that we can do to save your labor, uh, especially if you're having a hard time getting more labor in the door, we might be able to eliminate the need for that. Uh, and then as well, uh, say, save money on uh, existing processes that are just inefficient, uh, that can help offset some of the inflationary costs that you're seeing. And then from a supply chain standpoint, uh, for using 30% less chemical, uh, that's 30% less demand you have on the supply chain, uh, which can help alleviate the supply chain. Uh, it can help you give you more lead time to order to get things in on time. Uh, so it can take a lot of pressures off. And then, like I said, free up time, money, and resources for further projects that are also probably hidden in plain sight. Uh, so if you have any questions on that, uh, you'd like me to dive into more detail. Uh, that also led to more projects digging into that one. So if you have questions on how else you might be able to save time, money, and resources, let me know uh, in the comments. Um, give it a like, subscribe, um, and I'll be putting out more of these case studies uh, as the days and weeks go by.